This desert wasteland was a turning point for Helena and her allies. It was here that her fellow explorer Rockwell began his spiral into darkness. If only Helena could have seen the threat that was so close to her, where Rockwell's experiments would lead. There's danger lurking beneath these sands, Survivor. Seek out this Ark's Guardian and find your way to where I'm waiting for you. Despite my limited equipment, I have managed to run some initial tests on the Edmundium. Based on my observations, a typical forge may not be enough to smelt a sample of Edmundium ore into any sort of usable ingot. I suspect that it has extremely strong metallic bonds, and therefore a much higher melting point than any conventional metallic element. I must find a proper base of operations where I can run more extensive experiments. I mustn't be over-eager, however. I have limited samples and... Drat! I shall have to ruminate on this later. A sandstorm may be brewing and I have no desire to be caught in it. I'm grateful that Wali allows me time to study the local wildlife. But I suspect she only does so out of amusement. She always says something like, Why do you spend so much time on these scribbles that no one will read? I never have a good retort. It's true, no one may ever read my dossiers, as I have no way to reproduce or distribute them as long as I'm trapped on one of these space stations. When I started them, they were a passion project, created out of my love for nature and its creatures. Now, I guess they're just part of my identity. Writing them helps remind me of who I am. As my withdrawal from the Burning Phoenix's camp demanded haste, I did not have the time to double-check my supplies. It appears that I shall have to do some hunting. No matter. I may not be as spry as I was when I fell the charging rhino on the plains of the Serengeti, but with the small armory I managed to abscond with, I can surely manage. I had planned on trading those weapons for information as soon as I encountered a peaceful tribe, but I can spare a few rounds of ammunition. I can't believe it. Wali spotted someone wandering in the desert the other day, and it turned out to be none other than Edmund Rockwell. <laughs> I just about burst into tears when I recognized him. Apparently, he heard that Nerva was holding me captive and sought to negotiate my release. That led him to the cave, and eventually he wound up here. <sighs> Awfully sweet of him to go through all that trouble for my sake. Strangely, Wali claims that she saw a portal open up far away from her territory shortly before mine did. I guess that was Rockwell's, though Wali arrived at the scene too late to track him. Rockwell theorized that the portals may have taken us through time as well as space. Considering my present company, I'm inclined to agree with him. Confounded weather. Not only did that sandstorm separate me from my steed, but when it cleared, I was beset upon by none other than the traitorous Miss Walker herself. Oh, she put on quite the act, spouting all sorts of nonsense about how good it was to see me. Rubbish. I see right through her ruse. I am certain that she is after my Edmundium. The only reason she has not simply looted it from my corpse is that she requires my superior intellect to understand it. Well, two can play this game, Miss Walker. I can fill the role of the benign old scientist for a time, but I shall not be betrayed again. Wally has been much quieter since we found Rockwell. I guess she's just letting us catch up. However... She did say something interesting when we were recounting Nerva's ambitions for the island. This place would never allow anyone to master it, she said. And when I asked her to explain it, she told me that the great city to the southeast was destroyed by the obelisk itself. Now it's just conjecture, but it's interesting to think about. Could the curators of these stations be monitoring human behavior? and clipping its wings should the survivors ever band together and fly too close to the sun. If each station represents a different group in a larger experiment, resetting 
human progress would make a lot of sense. It's a bit grim though, isn't it? Yikes. I may have given Miss Walker too much credit. Although I carelessly allowed her to catch sight of my Edmundium ore samples, she was more interested in the artifact I possess. I should have realized this sooner. Miss Walker's specialty is biology. She would not recognize the unique properties of Edmundium if they hit her square in the forehead. That fact has eased some of my tension. Even if Miss Walker seeks to take advantage of my genius, she is focusing on the wrong discoveries. So long as I am careful in my studies of Edmundium, I shall remain miles ahead. I don't think Rockwell's been sleeping much. I awoke last night to find him studying a strange piece of metal by firelight. I guess some tribe gave it to him as a gift, along with a very familiar looking artifact. I insisted that we show those items to Wali, and she recognized them as the property of this station's lone guardian. With all that she knows, I'm not surprised that she's activated the obelisks before. Hell, it sounds like the old battle axe has even slain the beast herself. Since we have said guardian's artifact, Wali says that we can leave this station at any time. I suppose we may as well. Rockwell's eager to depart, and as much as I like Wally, I've had my fill of sand. I am glad that I possess the foresight to hide my presence from Miss Walker after her capture on the island. She clearly believes that I never learned of her betrayal. By cunningly taking advantage of this fact, I have managed to completely deceive the deceiver. The grim old bat she travels with is another matter. I often catch her glaring in my direction, her eyes sharp and mistrusting. If I could, I would deal with her as I dealt with Timur, but I fear she is far too observant. For now, I must maintain my deception as best I can. The transporter that can take us back to the control center station is in the ruins of another city, south of the mountains. Wali believes that it was destroyed by the obelisks, just like the city in the southeast. I did impress her for details. Not that I'd have gotten any. Wali's more tight-lipped about those ruins than anything. I had to practically beg her to take me to the southeastern city, and while we were there, she spent most of her time just gazing out into the distance. No sense in bringing her mood down with that rubbish now. After all that she's done for me, I'd like to give her a nice, proper farewell. I cannot wait to be rid of that glowering menace of a woman. This so-called Wali Alaswad. I suspect the feeling is mutual. She has offered little in the way of farewells while seeing us to this Ark's entrance to the Starlit Sanctuary. Things will be much easier once Miss Walker and I have parted ways with the Desert Witch, I suspect. Miss Walker is thoroughly oblivious to both the wonders of Edmundium and my knowledge of her underhanded scheming back on the island. She can continue to fiddle with trinkets and relics. I may even assist her if it suits me. Meanwhile, I shall unlock the secrets of the most extraordinary element in the universe, right under her nose. Having seen us through the ruins and safely to the platform, Wali has taken her leave. After doing so much for me, I was sad to see her go, but at least I got to see her smile before she left. Well, me and Radar. I can't very well take the little critter with me, so I officially gave Wally ownership of her. <laughs> They'll be good for each other, I think. Gah, I wrote Wally up there, twice. I suppose old habits die hard, but it's not really her name, is it? I always knew that was the case, but she'd never told me to call her anything else. At least not until now. Well, at any rate, cheers, Raya. It was a pleasure to have known you.
proud of you. I couldn't have done it without you. And you'll never have to. I've found in my life that a sense of loss is inescapable. Death smiles at us all, and it's time. I can make a difference. Perhaps we are being punished, and the shadows of our deeds in life have followed us here. No one knows where, or only what this place is. Some think it to be the afterlife, and others purgatory. How could I fear death, Alma? I have already died. As have we all. These are not my stars. And this is no afterlife. I'm going to survive. Searching Helena's memories, finding what I have forgotten all these long years. Her friends, and the journeys they had. Was it all for nothing? No, it had to be done, so that one day you could exist. Together you and I, we can put this right. You must travel onwards, Survivor, for your greatest trials are still to come.